Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This is our December 2023 Q&A and we've got tons of great questions about what else? GPU prices in 2024. Where is this market going, especially given how far GPU prices have fallen in 2023? Do we expect to see that trend continue with the RTX 4000 series super cards and RTX 5000 series cards launching next year? Or are we gonna get more of the same? We'll also talk about AM4 versus AM5. Is it finally time to completely dump AM4 and jump into AM5 now that CPU prices, DDR5, and motherboard prices are down? Remember, if you get value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Micro Center, my favorite tech place on earth. Great news. Micro Center just opened its 26 US store with Charlotte, North Carolina coming in early 2024. Micro Center has insane holiday savings right now with great deals like this Ryzen 7800X3D for just $329 or make it a bundle with a B650 motherboard and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM for just $499 or enjoy high FPS 1440p gaming with this RTX 4070 GPU for just $529. Want to get into 3D printing? New in-store customers can get the Creality Ender 3 S1 for just $149. Check out the great deals using the link in the video description. Let's jump to the great questions we got this month. In fact, I got so many great questions specifically about the GPU market, both in 2024, as well as the future of things like DLSS versus FSR versus XESS. I'm actually going to split this. I'm going to split this into two different Q&As. So this Q&A, we're going to focus on where is the GPU market going in 2024 because we saw some massive, massive changes in 2023. The GPU market really entered on super high, right? Still off that oh, Black Friday 2022 wasn't bad, but off those highs and off the GPU shortage. And then if you look at where GPU prices are now, it's pretty insane where we've come in just a couple years. All right, we got Matthias Oliveira asked a great question about the RTX 4000 series super cards that NVIDIA is set to announce on January 8th. It says, hey, Jason, what are your thoughts on RTX 4000 super series? Do I think it's going to shake up the market or at least fill the void for 1440? Build. Now, this is a great question. I actually see three, three different possibilities here. We'll go through those in just a moment. But let's talk about why is NVIDIA even launching these cards right now? They're launching them because objectively, and I think even from NVIDIA's point of view, the RTX 4070, the RTX 4070 Ti 12 gigabyte card for $800, and the RTX 4080 for like 11 or 1200 bucks now, which is what you usually find it for, 16 gigabyte card, are all objective sales failures. They are failures because AMD is massively selling. You can see this uh, Tech Epiphany. If you look at the uh, Mine Factory, uh, which is a German retailer, their sales number, you will see the RDNA, three is outselling the RTX 4000 series lineup right now at the mid and the high end. You see that uh, Amazon, you see that other places as well. The, the cards for NVIDIA that are really selling are like the 3060 because you can get one for like $260, $280 now. So they're actually selling better at the low end and not as well in the mid range and higher end because their cards are overpriced. They don't have as much VRAM as AMD. VRAM became an issue when a number of games in 2023 at the beginning, as we all remember, started launching and they were just broken unless you had more than eight gigs of VRAM. And a lot of those games are also broken if you turn on ray tracing on ultra details, they use more than 12 gigs of VRAM. So NVIDIA realizes that these are not performing where they want it to be and AMD is eating into their market share. Now at the same time, NVIDIA wants to become an AI company and they could just as easily say, oh, we don't care, whatever, gaming market, you know, we're done with the gaming market, we'll produce another round, but we're going into AI because it's easier to sell, you know, a couple thousand GPUs to one customer than sell individual GPUs to thousands of customers, obviously, right? And their margins are significantly higher for those professional cards because companies like Amazon Web Web services and others are willing to pay through the nose right now for those AI GPUs. So basically what NVIDIA is going to do is they're going to take a 4080 die, they're going to drop that into the 4070 Ti Super and they're going to call it the 4070 Ti Super. They're going to give it 16 gigs of VRAM because the memory architectures are all set up for that on the 4080. They're going to take the 4070 Ti die, a version of it, and they're going to drop it into the 4070 Super and they're going to stick with 12 gigs of VRAM, which I think they're kind of stuck with, unfortunately, and that's too bad. That's too bad. They could do something about that, but they've chosen not to. And then, of course, we've got the 4080, they're just going to take a higher bin die of that and they're going to make that the 4080 Super. That's the changes right there. And, you know, in terms of performance expectations, we expect probably the biggest uplift from the 4070 to the 4070 Super. Very slim, however, on the 4080 to the 4080 Super because effectively it's still the same die. 
It's just a slightly better binning of it. So that's what we're looking at. And really they're fixing the VRAM on the 4070 Ti Super. It's gonna have 16 gigs of VRAM, which is honestly, that's the floor from now on for an $800 GPU. But it's all gonna come down to pricing. So let's talk about those three scenarios. Scenario one, Nvidia prices is super aggressively to go after AMD and really just kind of run them off the road in terms of the 7800 XT, where they're gonna probably target with the 4070 Super, the 7900 XT, which they're gonna target with the 4070 Ti Super, and then the 7900 XTX, which they're gonna target with the 4080 Super, or at least use that to push regular 4080 pricing down into the same range so it's competitive. And if they come super aggressive, I think consumers win. I, I want it so bad because I don't care about AMD, Nvidia, Intel, any of these companies. I care about the consumer. And when these companies have to slug it out and compete for our dollars, then we're gonna get the most out of those dollars. It's just basic capitalism, right? And that's the system we live in. So let's take advantage of the system that we live in. Scenario two is that Nvidia basically says, hey, we don't wanna upset the Apple cart. We just want our GPUs to perform a little bit better, maybe offer a little bit more product segmentation in there. So we're gonna take our GPUs and rather than kind of try and push everything down, we're just gonna try and keep everything where it is and just kind of find a way to put them kind of in between these GPUs. Honestly, I kind of feel like maybe from a shareholder perspective, that's what a lot of people wanna see Nvidia do in terms of their shareholders, because that's gonna be best for share price and best for their profit margins, but I don't really see that moving the needle for us. And then of course, there's there's this scenario that I think a lot of people are afraid of, which is Nvidia says, hey, AI GPUs are still selling like hotcakes. Uh, we don't have to produce a lot of these GPUs, but it's, you know, Jensen, you know, he's a founder CEO. He's got an emotional stake in fighting AMD that probably like a hired gun CEO just wouldn't have, that all they would care about is share price. And so we're gonna do this for Jensen, basically kind of make things seem a little bit more competitive and we're gonna slip those in and the pricing isn't gonna be that great, but oh well, you know, too bad. We're Nvidia. If you don't want all of our Nvidia goodness, then go buy the competitors, but we know you're gonna come home to us anyway. So those are the three scenarios. Which is the most likely? I would love number one to be the most likely where they come super aggressive with pricing. I, I think they're gonna try and kind of shoot the middle. I think they're probably gonna slip these in, but we will have to wait and see. I, I feel like Nvidia is a little bit on the defensive here because AMD GPUs have been selling so well. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. All right, we actually got another great question. Is it worth waiting for the next generation GPUs considering a possible generational leap? So we're talking RTX 5000 series GPUs here, expected at the end of 2024, by the way. And we'll talk about more about that. RTX 3000 was a big jump, 4000 series, huge disappointment, and it doesn't feel right buying that 4000 series GPU. Let's talk about why that was. And I know the question, of course, was also from Matthias. I don't look at who asked the question, I just look at the question and the upvotes, but I'm noticing it's the same person right now. So good job, Matthias, you got two questions in. So let's talk about why the 40 series felt so different from the 30 series, because the 30 series was a massive generational uplift over the previous generation. But if we look at the 4090, that was a huge uplift over the 3090, right? Even the 3090 Ti, it was a huge uplift. But then what happened? At every price point after that, or every GPU after that, seemed like it was almost a regression in terms of the performance. And that is because, especially once we got to the mid-range, Nvidia tried to create so many different products. They started using die cuts, basically, for like, for instance, the 4060, they use the 107 die. That's one of the smallest dies that you would normally have in an RTX 4050 out there, but they used it for the 4060. For instance, if you look at the RTX 3060, it used the 106 die for the GA series, the GA 106. So there you go. It's actually, the die size is smaller. It's a different die and it's a lower quality, lower bin die. So that's what they did. They shifted everything down. So the 4060 you're getting right now should have been the 4050. The 4060 Ti that you're getting right now should have probably been the 4060, so on and so forth. And that's why some of these GPUs just feel much weaker. Even though the architectural Ada Lovelace, which is the RTX 4000 architecture, was a huge uplift in terms of efficiency and other things, but they've used that, that, that additional performance and then they dropped the die down. So it felt like you were standing still, even though from an efficiency standpoint, if you just look at die to die, the 106 versus 106 dies, there would have been a huge uplift, but they decided, no, we're gonna drop this down here. That's why these GPUs feel so underperforming. And the other thing is they just didn't plan for the obsolescence of eight gigs of VRAM. Now, AMD for a while has tried to make the argument that we're giving you way more VRAM as part of our value proposition to you. So AMD was, you know, because of their marketing strategy, 
they were in kind of the catbird seat when a lot of this happened and all of a sudden, Nvidia just had nothing but eight gigabyte GPUs. The 3070 eight gigabyte, right? The 3060 Ti eight gigabyte. The 3060 12 gigabyte, the reason that is one of the best sellers on Amazon right now, you get 12 gigs of VRAM for what, $289? And if you absolutely have to have NVIDIA, that's the GPU you're gonna get. And it performs almost the same as the 4060 because the 4060 should have been the 4050. So with all that out of the way, should you buy RTX 4000 series cards or should you just wait for the 5000 series cards? It's too early to tell what the performance on these is gonna be. And the other thing is NVIDIA can always pull a fast one again on the product segmentation like they did this generation. And they can drop dies down that normally we would expect to be like a you know, a 5080 die or a 5070 die, and they can drop into some weird, you know, TI segmentation like they've like they've done this this generation. I just think it's too early to tell. We are expecting another kind of big uplift, at least at the 5090, the 59, because there's no segmenting the top die. It's it's the top die no matter what. At the 5090, we are expecting another big uplift in terms of performance. So if you're a buyer out there and you're sitting around thinking, God, I really wish I could get a 4090 right now, but the China thing, they can't even find one. I'd say, you know, consider waiting. Although of course, when those come, they will probably sell out for months and months and months and months, the same way that the 4090 did. And it could even be worse with the AI boom, which we're gonna talk about in terms of pricing in just a moment. So it's really fraught when you're this far out, when you're about a year out. The other thing is there's no guarantee that Nvidia actually launches those GPUs in 2024 because AMD canceled its high-end RDNA 4 because it's using a multi-chip module reportedly, they just couldn't get it to work using the multi-chip mo module. So they're gonna release mid-range and low-end GPUs for the RX, the Radeon RX 8000 series, but you're not gonna see like an 8900 XTX GPU necessarily out there because again, it seems like they're not gonna be able to get it to work. So they're just shelving it and they're jumping straight to RDNA 5 where they're gonna then again compete at the high end. So because of that, Nvidia might feel like, huh, we don't have to do this. We make way better margins on our on our AI GPUs. So we're gonna shove all that production over to AI and we'll just wait. And as long as AMD doesn't threaten us, too bad. We'll launch these GPUs when we're ready and what's best for our profit margins. So I'm not even sure that RTX 5000 series GPUs are coming to save you. All right, that truth guy says, hey Jason, I wanna know, is the 7800 XT better than the 4070 in productivity as well? Because it is faster, remember, it's faster than rasterization. I'm a graphic designer, I do UI, UX, and Adobe After Effects, I think, sometimes using high effects. Will this car be able to run GTA 6? That's a lot of different, that's a lot of different kind of crazy stuff all in the same bucket, right? The gaming, GTA 6, listen, if you buy a 7800 XT or RTX 4070, don't worry. I mean, knock on wood here, because you never know, Rockstar, it's up to Rockstar Games. But if they can't get it to run on those current generation, kind of upper mid-range cards, then nobody's gonna be running that game. And I don't think they wanna do that. I don't think they wanna do that. So yes, I believe those cards are gonna be run GTA 6 just fine, but we don't even know because all we have is a trailer right now for that game after like, what, a decade or so. Let's talk about productivity work. Uh, Tech Notice is a great channel. Uh, I've been on his podcast program. You can check it out. He does creator-focused testing work and does really, really good job. So something like the 7800 XT or RTX 4070, either one of those is gonna be fine. The one example I think, the, the one holdout out there, if you do a ton of work in Blender, then for whatever reason, uh, RTX cards are almost twice as fast, I think it's like 80% faster in Blender, but just Blender and everything else, AMD is really close to the gap. That being said, if you just kind of occasionally do Blender stuff, you probably never even know the difference. So I would say buy whichever you like. I actually use right here, that is a 7900 XT. I use this for video capture. I use this for video editing. Everything you see on this channel is captured with this card. So you tell me, can you use these for production? I think so. We also got a lot of great questions about AM4 versus AM5. Jack Johnson says, does the 5800X3D Still makes sense for an upgrade in 2023 when the cost of DDR5 and AM5 motherboards has dropped significantly. In the Ryzen 7600, it's even slightly more powerful. I don't know about that, but it's still, they're on par and only costs $195. Should AM4 users finally leave the old platform? If not, when would be the right time? This is a tough one, and this is gonna come right down to you. And honestly, the challenge is the 5800X3D continues to cost 300 and something dollars. Now listen, Black Friday sale, 290 bucks. I would have picked it up if I had like a Ryzen 2600 system and a decent B450 motherboard out there. Or if I had a Ryzen 3600 system or something like that, I would have automatically upgraded and snapped that up. But 
We are expecting the 5700 XT. So this really makes this complicated. Still rumors out there. AMD could decide we're not doing it. If they price that CPU around $200, I just don't see how AM4 owners don't just snap that thing up and stay there because the pricing is insane. DDR4 RAM is still insanely cheap, although it's ticking back up in price, as is all RAM, as is all SSDs out there. And I will say, you know, it's nice to see those AM5 Ryzen 7600 CPUs at $195, kind of where they should have launched probably, as well as cheaper B650 motherboards that are foregoing some of the nonsense of PCIe Gen 5 devices support, which completely inflated the cost of those early boards, features that no consumer is ever going to use during the useful life of these PCs. And now we're just focused on really, really good per price to performance motherboards coming out out there, including a couple that have recently been introduced. So I think it's closer. It's still cheaper. It's still absolutely cheaper to go with a 5800 XTD if you have a good kit of RAM that's like 3200 CL16 or you know somewhere in that speed or even maybe a little bit faster than that, any decent motherboard that you'd like to hold on to. But I could also see you saying, you know, I bought the board for $90. I'd rather upgrade to something that's a little nicer. I'd rather get on the new platform and be able to drop something in the future. I would say the scales are balancing. This time last year, we released a 5800X3D build guide because we were like, don't build with the 7600 just yet because the 7600 at the time was $300 and it didn't make it. And the motherboards were stupidly priced and DDR5 was stupidly priced. But yes, a year later, and we have seen the scales kind of tip back. I don't think they're quite yet in favor of just go straight to AM5 if you already own AM4. I think if you're building new, AM5 is the place to be. Let me just be absolutely clear about that. And I think this is Intel's problem too right now. And I would love Intel, by the way, to be more competitive. And you notice when the 13600K came out at a good price, around that $300 price point and crush the 7600, uh, same gaming performance, but way more productivity performance for the same price, AMD was forced to cut prices. So that's what I would like to see. I'd like to see both Intel and AMD out there. Right now though, it is hard to argue in favor of Intel's platform, no long-term kind of life upgrade. You're just buying what you get right now. So yeah, I would say right now, if you're an AM4 owner, I still like the 5800X3D. I like where the 5700X3D might go, but if you're building a brand new system, it's all AM5 right now. All right, I'm joined by Mr. Bear here who wants to help answer this question from Anton because it's so confusing to so many people. Hi, Jason, there's a lot of purples on my setup all connected to my PC via USB and they can't remember the difference between USB 2.0, 3.0, 3.2, there was also a 3.1 at some point, 3.2 Gen 1, 3.2 Gen 2, et cetera. What purples should I prioritize on better USB connections like mice, keyboard, microphone, USB dongles? I would also say video capture devices, uh, you know, video cameras, things like that. How do I tell what gen and speed they support? Let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a whole dedicated video on this, because I could probably give you about eight to 10 minute kind of how the cables work, how the speeds work, why there's no G USB 3.1 anymore, or really even 3.0. O anymore, and you'll find references to products that has everything to do with the USB Standards Commission and their licensing nonsense and how they continue to revise these standards so that no human being could possibly understand them all. But let me give you in a nutshell how this works. The black ports on the back of your motherboard are USB 2.0. They are the lowest bandwidth ones, but they're plenty for mice, for keyboard, for other things. But I would not, for instance, plug like a USB hub or anything or a splitter into those devices because you're splitting an already relatively low bandwidth out there. But those are great for those kinds of, you know, mouse, keyboard devices that don't need a lot of bandwidth. Even most microphones do not need that. But then when we talk about video cameras, you know, especially depending on the resolution and the frame rate, you're gonna need more and more bandwidth. Then we need higher speed devices. The blue ones on the back are typically what used to be called USB 3.0 or 3.1, but are roughly now 3.2 Gen 1. They're much higher speed, but they're not the fastest speed for type A ports, which are the rectangular ones. And that's where you wanna plug in devices that just need more speed. Not every motherboard has them, but if you have red ports on the back, those are generally USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, which are quite a bit faster. They're double the speed of the Gen 1 ports. And those are the ones that I would start with. Honestly, I'd fill all my red ports up with my high speed devices, like my, my super high, uh, FPS and super high resolution webcam that I'm using or any other device that needs a lot of bandwidth, I'd start filling up those red ports first and then I'd go drop to the blue ports and then I'd drop to the black ports. And honestly, the only way you're gonna know what 
your bandwidth needs are, is you got to look at the device you're plugging in. Obviously, there's tens of thousands of different devices you could be plugging in out there, including Wi-Fi dongles and other things. They're going to tell you generally what speed they need. So I would make sure to check my device, check my motherboard and plug it in. I hope that allows you to plug stuff in. Start with your highest speed devices for your high speed needs and always plug in your mouse, your keyboards, everything else to those lower speed plugs. We got a great question from our Los Angeles Kings. Art, you must be a hockey fan out there. Hey, Jason, when is Mr. Bear getting a raise? Mr. Bear here, honestly, he has had a raise lately. Some of you might know, especially if you're channel members, our other kitty, Xena. Unfortunately, we found a small tumor. Our vet found a small tumor in a regular checkup. She's had a little bit of surgery to remove it. She's having a little bit of chemotherapy right now. Get pet insurance if you don't have it, because if anything happens to these guys, then you can get it taken care of, and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg, which is great. But during this, our other cat, Xena, has not wanted to eat. It affects their appetite, so we're trying to free range her, and as a result, this guy right here has just eaten everything in sight. If you leave him alone for five seconds, he's a food vacuum and he has gotten quite a bit of a little extra weight. You'll notice there's more Mr. Bear here. We're getting better. He's on a little bit of a diet right now. We're trying to get him back to his original weight because we we love Mr. Bear. We want him to be healthy and happy. So he has gotten a raise in terms of treats though recently. So that's going to be it for this segment of the Q&A. Remember, we are dividing it into two because there were so many good GPU and kind of future 2024 questions, especially in building in the PC sphere. So make sure you're subscribed with the notifications on for that. And remember, if you got value out of this video, give it a like because it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here who's very, very tired. He fell completely asleep during filming. Speaking of cool content, if you're just looking for something fun to watch right now, check out our recent Boost My Build. It was our series finale for season three. That's right, series finale for season three. It was a lot of fun right here. Check it out. Some terrible CPU GPU combos to laugh at, and we'll catch you on the next one.